Yellowstone Season 5 Episode 3 Ending Explained Tall Drink of Water is the third episode in this season, and I feel the title of this episode is reminiscence of reality hitting. Beth doing one over market equities, Jamie being front and center of holding the fate of the state and his family's ranch in his hand whilst up against Sarah, and whilst John Dutton didn't have a large role to play in this episode, it was more focused around how the actions that he caused in episode 1 and 2 of the show are impacting everybody around him. Casey is getting out of the fight, and Beth? Well, she may now face the legal battle that she didn't expect to. So with that, I thought I'd recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this episode. So let's get into it. Here is Yellowstone Season 5 Episode 3 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. This episode of the show concluded with Beth being arrested for aggravated assault as she attacked Haley in the bar for hitting on her husband Rip. The main purpose of the final 10 minutes of the show was to lean in on the fact and make it apparent that things are not quite as they used to be. We saw this with Rip talking to his old friend about that at the bar, and also when Sheriff Ramsey quoted that line too as he arrested Beth. However, the thing that I took away from it is that things aren't too dissimilar. The connection in the modern day in Montana compared to three decades ago, which we saw in the flashback at the start of the episode, with the wolves being the main focus, we're now starting to see again as it's something that is repeating itself. However, this time, it's the people that are on the ranch's fault and not the wolves. Whilst people come, go, and change, history has a way of repeating itself, and I feel the connection between the story of the wolves from three decades ago now occurring in a different form in 2022 has a lot of power and meaning behind it. I'm going to break this video down by all of the main character arcs. Beth. This episode was very much focused around Beth. Her journey into Salt Lake City to meet with Rob with the aim of screwing over market equities was her main focus, and we saw it dominated her from start to finish. The focus that she had, the getting up early going against her usual routine, showed that it was something that was on her mind, even wanting to celebrate right down to the end. The only time that we saw her as her true self in this episode and got a glimpse on the inside of the hard exterior that she emits most of the time was when John mentioned to her about how he missed Beth's mother. To her father, she acted like she always did, caring with a tough edge, telling him to find new love whilst he still can. And this was something that I think was alluding to the potential blossoming of a relationship with Linnell being on the horizon, and setting up that storyline of them growing closer as we did get small hints towards it in the first two episodes of the season. But the main thing that we got to take away from this moment was when Beth teared up in the car in private and showed some emotion, something we rarely see from her. She's fearful of the legal ramifications coming towards her from market equities, as she mentioned to Rob. This was due to her breaking the NDA that she signed when working there, and her responsibility and the fact that now all of market equities projects are essentially collapsing under the new ruling of John Dutton as governor of the state. However, once she palmed off $200 million worth of real estate to Rob to hurt market equities even more, and to hopefully secure the firing of CEO Caroline Warner, the legal battle that she was set to face became the least of her concerns, as she ended up being arrested for assaulting the woman in the bar. I feel from this moment on, we're going to see an uphill battle for Beth, as the character is really going to start to struggle. She'll have this battle to face, and even if she doesn't get sent down for this, then market equities will be going after her with everything that they've got. So it's going to be an interesting season, which I imagine will be centered around Beth. Jamie. Jamie only got one scene in this episode, and this was him flexing his lawyering abilities. However, it seems as though he's just a pawn in the game that Sarah is playing in order to get Jamie to either switch sides because deep down he knows that John Dutton is going to ruin the state, something which was further reinforced to us on a separate occasion when Thomas Rainwater was in his car, or she'll look to get dirt on him and use it against him, ultimately throwing him under the bus as his true intentions start to surface themselves. We're going to see Jamie get played, 100%, there's no denying that. But if something were to come out and he were to ultimately be the weak link in the family, we could see Beth use the damning evidence of Jamie disposing of his biological father against him and get him sent down. Let's not forget, Beth owns him, as she stated in the season 4 finale. So I imagine he won't want to step out of line. Casey Casey's arc is one of self-reflection, decisions, and doing what's right for his family. 
Despite having the visions of seeing him no longer being with Monica, with seeing him do all that he can to ensure that he keeps his family together, Monica is grieving the baby that they lost and she's devastated over what happened. Casey gave up his position and resigned, handing his badge to his father, which was a bold move for him. But it showed where his priorities were and that he's prepared to do anything that it takes to be with his family and keep them together as they try to navigate through this difficult time. Rip. Rip was facing the heat from the authorities following on from the wolves accidentally being taken out at the end of episode 2 and their collars being thrown down the river but now being found. He's also dealing with trying his best to get Carter to be the person that he wants to be. I thought the connection between himself and the orphan calf was a nice touch in this episode, showing that orphans don't get forgotten. He's doing all of this whilst also managing a temperamental Beth that's somebody who's like a loose cannon. His life is very unpredictable and he's facing his own heat just like Beth is, Jamie is, and John is. I'm intrigued to see what's going to unfold in the investigation of the wolves and their collars, as that could come back to get him. Rip is usually in control, managing his workforce and many other aspects of his life, but this? This feels like something that's currently out of his control. He's just waiting and hoping that nothing gets found. Thomas Rainwater With regards to Rainwater, it's clear to see that he's also facing the heat like many others in the show. People in the community feel as though he's the only person profiteering off of his casino and that jobs aren't being created in the community. With Casey close to him and him feeling as though John should resign as governor, it will be interesting to see if things change between the dynamic of them. Thomas wanted John as governor to stop the development on the land, but now that seems to be tamed down, the original feud could reignite. I thought episode 3 of the show was a good one. It was relatively heated in what was occurring, but the pacing felt about right. The pot has well and truly been stirred in the sense that market equities are out for revenge. Well, Caroline is. Beth is in jail. Rip is facing the authorities for the wolves. Casey is facing himself wanting to hold everybody together. And John? Well, he's just at the head of it all watching it happen. I think we're going to see some interesting developments over the next few episodes. And with this season being split into two parts... I think it's safe to say that there are going to be some eventful moments, hopefully with a good mid-season finale. The world that has been established merged with the shots of the landscape make this show as visually stunning as what the story and delivery of the characters are. There's not much like it out there, and it does make for some real interesting viewing. I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to occur next week and if they'll manage to get Beth out of jail, and if Jamie can essentially hold his own as Sarah tries to manipulate him to get him into the palm of her hand. So, there you have it. Yellowstone Season 5 Episode 3 Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. <laughs>